In this video, I'm just going to show you guys how to calculate the chi-squared test statistic in your calculator um, instead of by hand. It's a lot less time consuming. So um, if you don't know what the chi-squared test statistic is, you should probably go and check um, the previous video to this, okay? Um, but anyways, so we have this example. We have a U.S. Census uh, that has um, you know, 19.1% of people, residents in the U.S. are 20 or, um, 20 to 30, um, 21.5% are 30 to 40, 21.1% are 40 to 50, um, and so on, right? So you have this distribution of values from the U.S., and then they took a random sample of, uh, of people in a rant, I don't know, survey of, from the, that they took from landlines or something. So anyways, um, I already calculated the expected values for each of these categories. And then your chi-squared value is just your observed minus expected squared over expected. Um, add all of those values up. So on the AP exam, if you are calculating chi-squared with your calculator, <clears throat> you can do something like what I've just written here, which is um, you write the first value with the numbers plugged in, your observed value minus expected squared um, over the expected, and then plus dot 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 plus the last one. Okay, um, and so basically what you're telling the AP readers is that I know what the chi-squared value is and I'm just using my calculator to actually calculate it. Okay, and so then I'm going to go over how to actually do that. Okay, so first you have to actually enter each of these things, um, each of these lists into your calculator. So I'm going to go into stat, edit. Um, I've already entered them, but you want to in list one, no, it doesn't matter which one, just make sure you're consistent. Um, in list one, I have all of my uh, observed values. So 141, 186, 224, 211, and 286. And then in my second column, I have all of my expected values, 200.2, 225.3, and so on. Okay. So then what we need to do is we need to actually calculate this um, chi-squared, which is observed minus expected squared over expected. So the nice thing about the calculator is I can go into my list three and hit enter. And then what I want in list three is my L1 values, so my list one values, minus my L2 values, my observed minus expected, squared. And then I want to divide that by my expected values, list two. Hit enter. Those are all my, um, all those individual values. And then for the chi-squared, actual chi-squared statistic, I have to add all of those up. So um, that you can get with um, one bar stats. So I go stat calc, one bar stats. Um, and then I want to know my list three, calculate. I want to know the sum. So I'm just going to be looking at sigma of x, that's the sum of all of them, 48.13. Then from there you can go to um, a table and find out your uh, probability of getting that chi-squared value or anything more extreme. Um, or if you're lucky and you have a fancy schmancy calculator, you can just go to stat tests and you find the, if you have, some of the calculators don't have the goodness of fit test, um, but mine does. So I'm going to go to the chi-square goodness of fit test, hit enter, and then I put my observed values, which were list one, my expected values, which were list two, my degrees of freedom, which was four, because I had five categories, um, and then I calculate. And this one actually gives you your chi-squared, 48.12. Yay, same thing. So we did that right. Um, but our p-value is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative 10. That is a very, very, very small p-value. Um, but so then you have everything right there. Um, and then on the AP exam, you would just report, you know, what your degrees of freedom are, which is four, and then um, your p-value, which is really small, about zero. Um, 
very, very small, very small p-value. Um, so then you would conclude um, in context, reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, blah, blah, blah.